This Excel tutorial is to help AP Chemistry students with the graphing component of their lab report for the food dyes lab. On day one of the lab, students were given three FD and C food dyes. And they took those food dyes and they made standard curves. Those standard curves are tools now. Those standard curves should be linear, and they should have on the y-axis absorbance and on the x-axis concentration, and now they're a tool. They're a tool to help you determine the concentration of unknowns, and that's what happened on day two. On day two of the lab, students were given Gatorade and Powerade of the same color food dye with the same colored food dye. They just didn't know the concentrations in the Gatorade or the Powerade. So I want to walk you through the graphing and how to um, figure out your Gatorade and uh, concentration and absorbance. So to make a graph, you'll want to go to your Insert tab. And for this graph, you want an XY scatter plot. And Right now, if you just click on that, you're going to get a, a graph. It's pretty meaningless. So if you right click on it and go to select data, click on that and remove it and OK, now you've got a blank slate. And you can add any data series you want to this blank XY scatter plot. So again, right click, select your data, and we're going to add. And this is going to be my blue die, and it's going to be linear. And my x values, I already know that my x values are the first four points. Um, my linear component of my standard curve for blue. And you can tell because over here, my absorbance is um, all of my measured values are above 0.1 and below 1. And that's your greatest chance for standard absorbance curves versus concentration to be linear. All right, so I'm going to add my y values. You've got to get rid of this equals 1, so just delete it. And then take your first four points and OK and OK. Now, the, um, your zero, 00 point should be in there. That is a legitimate point. You calibrated using de uh, deionized water, and the absorbance of the deionized water as your baseline calibrated should be 0. All right, now I'm going to right click onto this and add my nonlinear component of my data. Now, if you did the red dye, I'm pretty sure the red dye all falls within the range of linear. And so you want to graph your 0, 0 part plus all of your data that falls in between 0.1 and 1. That's what you want to have for your line equation. All right. So I'm going to select my nonlinear data. I'm going to add, I'm going to call this blue nonlinear. My x is up here. That's always your concentration. And get rid of that equals 1. My y starts above 1, so that's my clue that it's probably going to be nonlinear. And click OK. And we can see that it's nonlinear. Well, what I'd like to do is keep all my blues blue because it's blue dye. And here I can select the blue color. I'd like these to remain blue. And so I click on those, <clears throat> go up to Format, 
and change your shape fill to blue and they're outlined in orange you can change that color palette over here to the blue color palette and they'll just be a lighter blue you've got some options for color to mess with that but that's not what I'm concerned about now I want to right click on my linear part of my graph right so when you right click on those data points you want to add a trend line and you want your trend line to be linear and you want to scroll down to the bottom display your equation on the chart and check out your r squared value your r squared value the closer that is to one the closer your data is to being perfectly linear in this case we're just checking to see how straight it is 0.9998 is significant, so our data is linear. It looks like we've got a point up here too that would probably be on that line as well. But this is okay. We've got a nice data set and it's linear. You can get rid of your R squared value. You don't have to keep that. Ultimately, for your lab report, I want to see a line like this for all three F, D, and C dyes the red, the yellow, and the blue. Um, but I also need to have a title and labeled axes. So click on the green plus sign. Make sure you have axes titles. Make sure you have a chart title. And if you add a legend, it will tell you what everything means. Now, when you want to add your other lines, you need another uh, spreadsheet. You need, you need more data. So that's easy enough. All you need to do is highlight, right click, and copy. Scroll down in your spreadsheet and you can paste it. As you can see, I have a spreadsheet here for, for red. Be careful. Make sure that your molar absorptivity constant for red and yellow are unique. I have those values for red and yellow right here. I also want you to have for each of your lines a single data point for your Gatorade and a single data point for your Powerade. For my Gatorade uh, concentration and absorbance, to add these points, I also want to show that I have significant figures for my concentration. To change the format of this cell so I have significant figures, you can right click and you want to format the cell and put it on number and you can tell it you know, how many decimal places you want it to have. But now you know that my concentration was 4 micromolar and that yielded an absorbance in between 0.1 and 1, which is that sweet spot on the line. To add these points, go back to your graph, right click on it again, select data, and add. And what we can do here is just call this, um, in this case, this is blue Gatorade. And our x value is concentration, so we'll just click on that. Our y value. Empty, empty that, that uh, cell, you got to get rid of that equals one, is going to be absorbance. And hit enter and OK. And I made a small mistake here with my Gatorade concentration. It was actually five um, as I processed it in this equation. So your x value is your concentration, and your y value is your absorbance. So you can use algebra to find your one unknown. And so you can see right here, I've got my blue Gatorade. One extra tip I have before I end this thing uh, is you might want to use the Greek letter mu, which is in lowercase, the micro prefix symbol. So right here, I want to insert micro. And that's the letter mu. 
So I'm going to go to the Insert tab, come over here to Symbol, and there's Moo, because I used it a lot. Um, if you're looking for it, looks like I just lost it. It's in the Calibri Basic Latin. Um, so there's my Moo Symbol. Insert that and close. And there's my concentration in micromolar. Of course, give me an axis title over here for absorbance. Give me a very descriptive chart title, which is the pretty much the goal of the lab or what this data is. Something like uh, deriving solution concentrations of sports drinks from a standard curve of known FD and C dyes. That's a sufficiently descriptive title. Thank you very much. I hope that helped.